My name is Richard. I listen to a lot of good music. I play guitar. I'm also a dog trainer. About eight years ago, I moved to Chicago, Illinois with a rock band. We were going to become rock stars. I needed a day job, and after working some, some pretty cruddy day jobs in Chicago, I got a job working for one of the best dog trainers in the country there. He had developed a reputation for working with harder to work with dogs, rescue dogs, uh, dogs that had been abused, abandoned, dogs that were genetically not sound and had a reputation for turning those around. I went there, got a job, and he selected me to do an apprenticeship with him. I uh, completed it in 2008 and have been training dogs professionally ever since. So I went to Chicago to become a rock star and I came back to Kansas City a dog trainer. All the doggy daycares and boarding facilities in Kansas City, they're cage-free boarding and they don't accept dogs that have off temperaments, especially dog-on-dog -dog aggressive dogs. With my experience that I had in Chicago, I feel like Kansas City totally deserves a place like Burke Avenue. This is Monday and he's my business partner. Right around the time I started my apprenticeship, my mentor's client came in and said there was a German Shepherd running around across the street. Long story short, it took us an hour and a half to catch him because he was so afraid of everybody. Part of my job at being an apprentice under Daniel was to work with the rescue dogs. Monday took to the training so quickly and so well that I could not take him into my own home. Ever since then, he's helped me to rehabilitate literally hundreds of dogs, a lot of dogs with issues. Um, I like to say it like this, if Caesar Milan's daddy is Scottie Pippen, this dog's Michael Jordan. Well, he's working with a dog named Kokomo. Kokomo actually came from Kansas City, Kansas Animal Control. Um, he was chained his entire life, we believe, by the way that he acts. Um, he's very unsocialized with humans and dogs. He has fly strikes on his ears where flies have eaten away at his ears. Um, he just doesn't have any social skills whatsoever, um, or obedience training for that matter. Um, hopefully Richard can fix him. We know he can because he's one of the best we've ever seen. Well, I don't think he's lost, I'll tell you that much. Well, he's lost, but I don't think he can, I think he can be back home. He might have potential to be a great dog. It's just he's just been under socialized. He's a big boy and he knows it. And he really needs to have some leadership right off the bat. But I need a different piece than this. It takes just as much training with the people that it does with the dog. Richard is very good at people training as well. He's very patient. Um, he deals with a lot of uh, people that are, oh, I can't do that, it's me. Oh, I can't, I can't do that to my dog. The first time we came in, in the middle of May, he just barked his head off the whole time we were here. And now I can see he's able to tolerate these other dogs and just not be distracted. So he's a heck of a dog trainer. I'd recommend him to anybody that was uh, starting out. I was fostering two Rottweiler Labradors for Unleashed and after two weeks they were dragging me around my neighborhood and scaring people, myself included, and the second time one of them got away from me um, I started bringing them here which is where I met Richard and I feel like he was a miracle worker. Richard was able to help me um, put those dogs in a really good place um, and be able to adopt them out to a really nice family. The reason why I got into dog training to begin with is because I like to help people. Obviously I love the dogs, but most of these people are just good people that just need to be given an education on how to properly handle their dog. My dog training philosophy is basically to teach people how to tell their dog how to react to a situation rather than waiting on their dog to react to the situation. In other words, my dog is jumping on somebody, we'll teach the dog to sit. We're replacing unwanted behavior with wanted and trained behavior. In my opinion, the best dog trainer in the world isn't ever satisfied with the techniques and methods he uses. He's constantly, he or she is constantly trying to improve and grow the resume and they want to keep learning. I think that's what makes me the best in the world is I'm never going to be satisfied and I will be handling dogs probably until the day I die.